Hi, hope you're having a great day wherever you are. Today, I want to talk about why I think, right, that not buying Bitcoin may be the biggest mistake in your life, right? So, why do I say that? First of all, this is not financial advice, right? But just that there are there are few points I really want to make to drive home, right? The point that why I think people who don't have Bitcoin, right, they think that they, they, they are just not um, investing or they're just not gambling their money away they just think that but actually right the key point that a lot of people do not talk about is that right you by not doing anything by just standing on the sideline and not participating you are actually will be losing out as well why do i say that so firstly there is this chart right by a twitter user called plan b this he actually made the analysis right of every four year period and he compared the investment returns between a portfolio that is the s p 500 that means the stock equity indexes compared to a portfolio with five percent bitcoin and 95 percent cash right he basically looked at every four year period so 2010 to 2014, 2011, 2015, 2012, 2016, 2013, 2017, 2014, 2018, and then 2015 to 2019, yeah? Now, what he compares is that basically, so the blue line is actually the uh, equity index and the red line is actually the portfolio with 5% Bitcoin and 95% cash. As you can see here, every four-year period, because four years is a bit of a long term, right? You really need to see the cycle. So it shows that basically the portfolio with the Bitcoin actually outperforms the equity index every time, right? Consistently. And he then asked the question, why should I ever hold stock? So basically, turn it the other way around is that if you don't hold Bitcoin, then basically you have been losing out in the last few years as well. That's one. Second thing is, right, there is a point about um, prediction. There are pre people who predict, right, that Bitcoin by Fund Strat, this Thomas Lee, formerly um, Chief Equity Analyst, right, uh, Thomas Lee, he was formerly JPM Chief Equity Analyst, and he has actually made the point, right, that this is um, in 2018, early 2018, they have actually predicted that over the long term, right, that one Bitcoin can be worth 10 million each. Why he say that is because, right, he has made this analysis of uh, generations. Now, as you can see in this chart, this is basically their chart. Just, just want to quickly explain it. The dark blue line is actually the millennials, right? Millennials, and this is the years when they, um, so 30 million of the 96 million millennials in the US will um, be aged at 35 years old, which is the prime income years. Prime income years just mean that you are probably earning a lot of money, so then you have extra money to invest and already you know, buying your first house and so forth. So the uptrend line is when they basically will continue to increase their income, and this is called their prime income years. The upward you know, sloping line is basically between when they are age 35 to 60 years old. And then, of course, it flattened out and then it's declining because that's when they are retiring, right? And just leaving off their um, income or passive income or whatever income that they have. Now, um, they, oh, he also showed uh, um, other generations. So the gray line is basically the uh, Gen X, right? Yeah which is uh, people who were born between 90, 1965 and 1980. That's the years, right? And this is their prime income years, basically. Prime income years is the people aged between 35 to 60. This period is when he see that whenever all these prime income years, they always coincide with a boom of uh, asset class. So for the Gen X, he said basically is the, it coincides with the boom of hedge fund. And the blue line is basically the baby boomers. It coincides with the stock equity boom. And for the red line, which is basically the silent generation that, um, that were born between 1928 and 1945, that coincide, their prime income years coincide with the boom of gold, right? G-O-L-D, gold. Now, then he moved on to say then in the millennia years, of course, this is all in the future. He's actually making a prediction. But... Millennials, what do they love? Because first of all, they distrust banks because they actually see their parents get burned by the financial institutions in the very recent um, global financial crisis in 2008, right? And so they basically are very 
skeptical they really really hate banks right and they also don't like stocks because they had a very bad memory of you know everyone being burned in stocks in a global financial crisis so what do they love obviously they were also survey done on millennials what do they love compact gold stocks and bitcoin landslide you know they actually chose bitcoin why is that and it is not surprising actually remember this generation they actually grew up with a lot of video games right with a game of thrones everything is in a virtual world right they are so used to facebook um you know the all the virtual things right ipads everything is convenient easy and you do not have to be able to see touch and feel as long as it's easy to use right and it is um makes sense for them they will adopt it so basically and because 30 million of them are going to enter their prime income years already this is already starting you know they have been already a few years into it the 2016 boom actually started and coincided with this boom and now right we although there was one more than one year of crypto bear market but now it seems to be you know going on the uptrend again so this his point of why he made the projection of 10 million is largely fueled by the millennials because they just love something that's virtual something that is so convenient right because gold it is you know although it is hard money but it's so difficult to be transporting over right and so easy to be confiscated right whereas bitcoin crypto is totally different and also you do not need to trust the government you don't need to trust the banks right you just need to trust the maps that's actually a lot of his logic of why now if he is correct right then one bitcoin is worth 10 million dollars in the future of course this can be 10 or 20 years down the road but still if you're not investing then basically you are losing big time right even if you just invest a little bit that little bit will grow into you know thousand times right you're talking about so yes so by just sitting on the sidelines you thought you are fine right you thought you are fine you're just not making the money which is okay but you are losing a lot actually yeah and um lastly as well that you know you you might think that oh you know now it's already eight thousand plus per bitcoin i'm already too late to the game but when you compare bitcoin market cap with a lot of the huge companies even to you know the gold market cap of eight trillion you know you're talking about bitcoin market cap is only 139 billion right and this is at just two days ago and all the big companies like jp morgan they have two trillion market cap uh, asset under management for them right and bitcoin is only 139 billion this is really a trickle compared to their big ocean of asset under their management right looking at this black rock six trillion vanguard five trillion charles Schwab, three trillion jp morgan two trillion and you look at the gold total market cap that one is also about eight trillion so real estate is again um is huge is like 200 trillion that kind of numbers right uh stock market caps total to global globally the stock market cap is about 73 trillion so bitcoin market cap is only 139 trillion so a billion right so can you imagine so basically so this is not too late so this is making that point but ultimately the point is a lot of people didn't drive home the point that right i know a lot of people just say that oh you know it is a very high risk reward asset class yes but i think more important is that if you do not gain exposure even a bit in my opinion is that because of all this opportunity all this huge upside right by not participating you are actually standing to lose a lot one case in point in history is that you know um when a lot of the countries were choosing which which um, method they want to adopt as their currency right a lot of the asian countries china india hong kong they all chose silver a lot of the western countries uk us they all chose um gold and europe now as we can see right a lot of the history what happened was then gold was the one that really boomed right and largely because of their um it is much harder to produce gold right compared to the total supply so the growth of uh, the supply of gold is growing very very slowly compared to the demand whereas silver it is very very easy to produce much more silver than um, its supply so in that case right whatever when prices of silver increased right supply also increased very fast to offset that um, demand so that's why price of silver did not increase by a lot and that 
and because of that, right, it is largely because of these reasons that a lot of the Western nations actually are growing much faster and are becoming a you know, superpower today. Whereas countries like India, China, and Hong Kong, right, one of the Asian countries, Southeast Asia, they are more on the slower growing side, right? Of course, now they're upcoming, but they have lost that, you know, that, that um, speed to market, let's say, right, compared to the Western world. And why? This is largely because of their choice of the method they use. Because one, the growing power chose gold, right, which is proven to be more correct, and silver, the other people have chosen silver. So, so similarly here, if you don't choose gold, or you don't choose Bitcoin in this case, right? Then it's very similar to if you know that today, right? If in the future, this Bitcoin has the huge potential with a lot of underlying logic that it is going to, um, you know, X, it can even thousand X. But if you chose not to participate, then basically you are choosing to forego all these gains, yeah? And whatever other asset class that you're holding on to, that kind of gains will definitely be smaller than the Bitcoin, than crypto. So because of that, then you are stand to gain, to lose a lot, right? And don't forget, the other thing is if you have a lot of your other asset class in fiat money, which will lose value because of the inflation that keep happening year on year, because the government keep printing a lot of money, so then your every other asset class will lose that value compared to crypto, right? Because crypto is again like gold, it is very hard, the, the supply, even if you want to increase, it is very difficult to increase, right? And in fact, in um, there's only 21 million Bitcoin, right? So that's the ultimate reason I want to drive home again that, you know, don't you think that by not getting exposure, you think you're fine, you're just right, not, you, you think you're okay. But actually, you're not, yeah? So that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed this. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll speak to you tomorrow. Thank you so much for your time.